Hey class, this is uh, Professor Nick Sensky at UNC Charlotte. Uh, this is part three of the second lecture for Grasshopper, and uh, today's topic is distributing geometry. And uh, just, just to refresh, we just looked at uh, methods for copying geometry if you have a series of points, right? The, the, you could use the points to uh, create geometry using the Grasshopper components or to distribute it using something like the Orient component. Um, but the key is, how do you get those points? How do you, how do you find those points uh, in, in your projects? Okay. And so I'm going to look at a couple different methods using uh, curves and services. The first uh, method is, uh, I'm going to just start with a couple of different types of curves. So a straight line, curve, and a curved you know, line, and an irregular closed line, okay? So three different kinds of, of curves. And uh, this is similar to the method that we used uh, for our project, for our column project. So we have a curve object reference and I can uh, divide. So there's divide curve. This is, um, actually I'm gonna delete that one. The one we looked at was uh, divide length. And that takes a that takes a curve to divide and it takes some kind of uh, length for the segments. So let's do number slider. Let's make this fairly large. So 50 units. Okay, so the curve we're going to reference, let's just look at these each. So I'm going to reference <clears throat> this first one, straight line, plug it in. And then look at the length. So as the length changes, so this is the distance between points along that line. You can see pretty regular spacing. We don't know how many points we're going to get. All we care about is the length between them. Okay. Let's look at the curved one. You can see also distributing those points as they get smaller. <clears throat> and then lastly, let's take a look at the closed one. So this is useful, you know, if you were if you were trying to make like a railing, let's say, you want a certain spacing between things, or you wanted to distribute some street lights around a parking lot, let's say, giving a given a certain length. Um, this is just a way to divide that up uh, in, into points. And there are a lot of things we can use points for besides distributing, you know, like besides taking geometry and making copies, um, which which we're going to look at uh, next week. But um, for now. The important thing is just to understand uh, where you can get points from and the kind of quality of that, like what kind of parameters that you have, um, what kind of parameters that you have control over, okay? So that's uh, divide length. And then the other kind uh, of component that we have that's useful is uh, divide curve. This one takes a curve and it takes a number of segments. And then there's a Boolean for dividing it uh, at kinks. And let's take a look at all those. So if I, if I put a curve in, and then there's a number of segments, let's make this a whole number then, natural number. <clears throat> so it attempts to divide this into three points. And as I go, it's going to divide it. So here, we don't know what the length is. Maybe we don't care. We just want a certain number of things. We want 15 things roughly equally equally spaced. Sometimes things get weird around corners. Um, and uh, we want them along this curve. And if you add, if you turn on the uh, split segments of kinks to true, it's going to put a vertice at each of those points. Okay. So that is a way. So not only do you have the, um, the number of, of, of segments, but then you have points of the kinks as well. Let's turn that off. <clears throat> Let's look at it again with um, different types of curves here. So this is this is this has 18 points plus and it's 18 segments actually I should say and then there's a point at the end and a point at the beginning so it actually ends up being like 19 points okay so again it's it's one segment two segment three segments so these go all along and then there's there's a there's a point left over and the same thing here okay so good good way to divide that up by the number of things so that's, those are the different ways that we can look at um, curves and we can divide them up into different kinds of point spacing. Okay. Let's go ahead and delete these. 
and let's look at um, some surfaces, okay? And uh, I'm just gonna make, again, kind of an irregular kind of surface. So take a line, make it a planar surface. Delete the curve, okay. So I can put in a surface component Set that to reference of geometry, and then you can hide it. So this is my surface, <clears throat> and um, a way a way to divide it up uh, is to use divide surface. So the surface divide component uh, takes a surface as its input, uh, and then has these UV. Uh, these UV arguments and what UV is you can think of it as X and Y uh, with with respect to that surface okay surfaces can have different kinds of like topological conditions uh, um, which which basically mean that the X and Y coordinates of the of the real world they like, don't apply but you still want things to have a certain direction left and right or up and down or back and forth and so um, UV kind of suffices for that it's a local coordinate system uh, and so U is one direction and V is the other and so that's going to give you kind of a grid uh, on your surface. If you take uh, a number slider, and we're going to set it up for you know whole numbers again, and let's just divide it to 40. You can plug it in, and uh, we'll do another copy and plug it in for V. You can begin to kind of see this relationship between the two. So again, there's this can change the density of points along that geometry. We'll talk later about how to change the orientation of that of that of that grid along the surface, but 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 just basically think of it as superimposing a grid uh, on that surface, um, a grid of points, and that is going to return um, a list of points that you can then use um, <clears throat> to distribute geometry. So I have like let's say a cylinder, and uh, so I have cylinders at that. At all those points, okay. So that's one way to get uh, to get points um, out of a surface. Let's take another look at uh, a different kind of surface. Uh, let's take uh, and create a like a cone or something. Okay. So instead of the input that I had, the surface, I'm going to delete that. I'm going to make a cone, and I'm going to make a parametric uh, cone just for for reference. <clears throat> cone object takes a base plane and a whoop, big radius and it takes a height. So plug that in and we've got our cone. And then what I can do is I can plug that geometry into surface divide and you can actually see, <coughs> excuse me, um, you can see how you can divide that up in X and Y. Okay, now from here, um, you could distribute uh, some different kinds of geometry uh, to those points, uh, but it raises some some of its own problems. Let's take a look at that. So let's actually take more more cones. Let's put cones on our on our cone. And if we uh, add that, you can see it, it's this kind of Christmas tree of Christmas trees. But look at how they're all oriented. They're straight up and down using that plane that base plane. So they have kind of a local kind of X, Y plane. Uh, they're 90 degrees. What if we wanted to make this like a big spiky cone, right? Like it's got, it's got spikes on it. Um, we want these things to face out. We want them to be oriented to the surface. Okay. So they're, they're on this uh, point, but we want them kind of rotated. We want the plane to be different. Okay. How do we do that? Um, what we can do is if you look at the the, uh, the surface divide component, it actually has a thing called a normal vector. And what a normal is, is it's a nine degree line that is perpendicular to a surface. It's essentially like what's pointing out from that surface. And we can use that to reorient uh, these cones, okay? Um, so we, again, look at the orient component. And uh, what we're gonna do is take the geometry uh, of the cone and plug it into orient. Let's disconnect this. And again, it has a reference plane and it has a target plane. And for now, let's look at, let's see if we can get this 
Yeah, so it's going to be it's going to be taking that from from where that cone is, um, that plane, and then the target plane. We're actually going to we need to make a plane. So let's go to vector. We need to make new planes. Uh, take a vector plane normal, and we're going to distribute the planes, and then distribute the put the cones on those planes, right? Because plane takes a cone. I mean, sorry, cone takes a plane. So the normal vector, the division points. So the points are the origin. Wow, lots of planes there. And the normal vectors are going to orient it. And now, so look at that, how they've, how they've synced up with that. That's a mess. OK, let's hide these. So we have lots of planes, and then cones want planes. So you could, you could do that. Actually, I made a mistake here. Um, cones take planes as input. So we actually uh, can just can just pipe those planes uh, directly into the cones, okay? So now we have our big spiky uh, cone. Now we could do um, some other things though. Uh, this this actually raises an interesting point. Um, so cones take planes as input. What about something that doesn't take a plane um, as input? So let's um, let's make some geometry. For this last example, um, I have a piece of geometry uh, that I made, so it doesn't actually have any any point or plane input, uh, and I just want to use it as an example again to show you how you can orient geometry uh, to a divided surface. Okay, so again, I have this kind of horn that I made, and um, I also made a point, uh, which is kind of my connection point. I'm going to use this as the reference plane for this object. Um, you know, sometimes you can use area. To find the center, but it might find the center as the inside of the object, and I actually want to make this the pivot point uh, for this object. So you can define an explicit uh, point that you can use as a plane. So again, I just made a simple point, you know, object, you know, that I made inside Rhino, and then this is um, a piece of geometry that I made. So I've got my Christmas tree; everything's divided up uh, in x and y coordinates. I uh, am going to take, make a geometry container. Gonna reference my geometry. Okay, I have my orient. The geometry goes into orient, <clears throat> and then for the plane, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna make a point container. I'm gonna reference my point that I made. See that green point there? That's gonna be my my reference plane. And then lastly, I take the planes which have been oriented to the normals. And plug it in for a target. It's gonna take a little bit, and you can see that it makes this kind of spiky uh, tree. You'll notice that the rotations of these are are um, a little strange. Uh, we can fix that. There's a component that actually orients uh, rotation, but for right now, what we've done is we've just distributed the geometry, and that's that's good enough for today. Uh, but again, you know, there are there are regular ways to distribute geometry. Uh, you know, if, if you have an object, and uh, there are ways to distribute um, irregular geometry, uh, geometry that you made, right? That doesn't come from Grasshopper. And um, so I've shown you, you know, again, examples of dividing curves and examples of dividing uh, different surfaces. And uh, what I just want you to look at are the different patterns for these. And uh, in your mind's eye, you know, if you want a set of points in space, uh, you know, I want you to understand uh, where that comes from, like what components you put together and what that pattern is. Okay, and we'll be using those patterns uh, when we look at these on la in lab uh, on Thursday.